Let's take a look at the three fundamental properties of the universe. We have mass, length, and time. And what we can do with these three properties is construct them in these unique mathematical ways and equations to be able to describe the world. So pretty much everything you're going to see can be boiled down into some combination of these three fundamental ingredients. Now I've created a simple table for each property, mass, length, and time. And I've made a symbol to represent each one of those here today. Capital M for mass, capital L for length, and capital T for time. And then there are corresponding SI units. So in physics, we use uh, kilogram for the unit of mass, meter for the unit of length, and second for the unit of time. In certain circumstances, you might use a different set of units, for, but for learning basic physics, these are the standard units that we use. Now, what I'd like you to do right now is think, how could you take two of these properties of the universe and construct what we call speed. So you have this sense of what speed is in your everyday life. How could we construct that quantity from two of these fundamental properties? And be specific, you should have some type of mathematical expression that represents this. But I'm going to show you a notational way uh, that might be a little different than you've seen before for typically how we write this uh, type of construction of some um, uh, quantity in, in the real world, like speed, that you might not have seen before. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video and see if you can construct now speed. All right, so ho hopefully you got it. It's pretty easy. Some familiar examples you might have thought of would be miles per hour or meters per second. You know, both are uh, representations of how fast something's going. Notice, though, that I constructed those by thinking about familiar units I'm used to working with in the real world. So you drive a car and you know you go a certain number of miles per hour and that's your speed, right? Well, here I'm expressing really the same idea, but I'm doing it using the symbols for length and time. And I'm constructing this quantity now called speed. Um, however, sometimes you'll see this in physics uh, where we do what's called dimensional analysis, where we're not actually constructing an equation, even though I do have an equal sign here. We're not constructing the equation right now where you would plug in numbers into these symbols that represent length and time. Instead, we're trying to show what are called the dimensions of this quantity that we're creating. And a way people typically denote that is they'll put a bracket around here saying that they're doing dimensional analysis, letting everybody know that these are not variables that you're plugging in numbers into. So you're not going to have like L is equal to five meters and then plug that in here. Instead, you're just abstractly saying, look, we're taking the property of the universe or uh, called length and we're dividing that by the property of the universe called time. And that is going to produce for us this new quantity out of those fundamental ingredients, if you will, called speed uh, that might have some use for us. Right? So these are the symbols, capital L and capital T, um, that, rep that represent the properties of the universe. And then if we actually had a formula uh, to express this, uh, any numbers that we were to plug into that formula, of course, would have to have the right units associated with them. So you'd be plugging in um, some uh, quantity for length in meters and some quantity in length for time if you actually built up the real formula for speed in a certain context. Okay, let's try another one. Uh, see if you can build up a uh, the um, quantity. We'll put this in brackets here. What's another common one? Let's do, why don't we do uh, area? So what's area dimensionally? Pause the video and see if you can get it. All right, so if you know your geometry, you know that the area of, say, a rectangle is the length times the width. You could also think about maybe the area of a circle uh, from a geometry class. So something like this. Here's r, the radius, and you know that the area of a circle is pi r squared. So hopefully these two the formula are showing you that you are multiplying a length times a length in, in both cases. So you could write that a couple ways. Uh, the easiest way, I think, would just be to do something like this, length squared. right? Or you could just do uh, length times length. That would work as well. Let's try uh, one more. Why don't you try to work out the dimensions for density? All right, pause the video and work it out. All right, so you probably know that density is mass over volume in terms of the simple formula that allows you to calculate density. But what are the dimensions and what properties do we use? Well, of course, mass. So we would use capital M here in the numerator. And then volume, how would we represent that? Well, the volume of 
say a geometric object, something kind of like this, is length times width times height. So maybe that's uh, width, maybe this is length, and maybe that's height. And you're multiplying each one of those things together. So you're doing length times length times length, and that would be length cubed. Uh, you maybe also know that if you have a sphere that has a certain radius associated with it, the volume of the sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So you're seeing that cubing right here, a length times a length times a length show up. So these are now the dimensions of density. There's a lot more things in physics that we'll see that are all kind of concocted, if you will, out of these three ingredients of mass, length, and time. And we can learn a lot just thinking dimensionally about certain parameters. Now, before we end this video, I, I do want to point out, just to make it crystal clear, that you know what you're looking at in terms of the difference between what we just, in general, call dimensions uh, versus units. So for that density parameter, the dimensions or the dimensional analysis we just did was the property of mass divided by the property of length cubed. Okay, um, But its units would look uh, different than these symbols here, right? Capital M is not a unit. Capital L is not a unit. Uh, instead, what would the units of density be? Well, mass has units of kilograms. And then um, length cubed, well, length has units of meters, and so we would have to cube meters. So we would get kilograms divided by meters cubed. Watch out, this lowercase m is not mass. Often that can get confused when you're working with this for the first time. So we see density is kilogram per meter cubed. So therefore, if we had a particular density value in the real world, I don't know, maybe it's something like uh, 12, I'm just making this up, kilograms per meter cubed. Here's a specific example of density. By the way, this is the symbol for density in physics typically. Uh, it's the Greek letter rho. Um, density is equal to 12 kilograms per meter cubed. There's a specific value now uh, that could go into some equation if we had it in an equation. All right, so just watch out for those notational differences uh, between dimensions and units. Uh, and then the other idea, just to leave you with here to end this video, is showing you a really uh, very important um, uh, construction out of these units. That's one of the most fundamental uh, principles in all of science. So I'll give that to you now and I'll have you guess at what it is. Okay, this one's really cool. So just like a chef uses ingredients to make some great dish, I'm going to take my three basic ingredients here and make something incredible. So <laughs> let's take first mass. We'll multiply that by the uh, length times length or length squared and then we'll divide that by something that just seems totally crazy, and that is time squared. Mass times the square of length divided by the square of time. I can't even conceptualize what it means to square time. I kind of get the idea of squaring length in terms of area, but what does it mean to square time mathematically? Well, we'll see these things in due time. Anyways, this has a particular uh, importance in physics. Let's do the units first as well before we uh, have you think about what it is. And the units would be kilograms multiplied by the square of meters divided by the square of seconds. Okay, pause the video. See if you can just guess at what physics concept parameter uh, this is. You might have absolutely no idea, but just think about maybe things you've heard before and see if you can come up with it. And then we'll take a look. All right, here's the answer. And likely you didn't get this, uh, you know, from your own mind working anything out. It's, uh, it would be pretty tough to do that, but this is energy. So somehow this word you've heard before, maybe in other classes or in the world, uh, energy, that has very specific meaning in physics. And it turns out to be this combination of fundamental properties. And this particular combination of these properties lead to a very important uh, principle in nature. It's called energy conservation, and we'll be talking about that. And it's this great principle uh, about having a certain amount of energy in a system, and that energy really never leaves the system. It'll stay inside the system, but it can turn into different forms of energy inside of what's called a closed system. It's the law of conservation of energy. And it's, it's such a great principle that helps us analyze complex systems in the world uh, that I kind of wanted to point it out here to you today in one of our first videos. All right, so there you have it, the three fundamental properties of the universe, mass, length, and time, and how we as humans can use these ideas 
uh, to construct more complex expressions and concepts that we can then further use as building blocks to understand our world. And we'll be doing that all year here in physics. All right, take care. See you in the next video.